Welcome back, baseball fans, 1971-74 Carryover League. We've got Hot Stove League talk number one of the uh, winter time. And this really is a hot stove talk because, um, well, not a hot stove, but I got a fire pit outside going <laughs> with something on the grill. And there might be some smoke building through an open window, so that kind of qualifies for a hot stove talk on a cold winter day. Actually, today is New Year's Eve, if, uh, and we're going to upload this video in a few weeks. So, we talked before about it in the hot stove league. We want to move some players. All the player movement has been done, but now we got a couple months before the draft, so now it's about following some juicy rumors that the Cleveland Indians... Where are they? Here they are. The Cleveland Indians, uh, their keepers are Ray Fossey, and they have Eddie Leon, and they have Vita Pinson, and of course, Frank Robinson. Now, Robinson was last year uh, acquired by the Indians. Um, in an off-season deal with Baltimore, because Baltimore uh, filled up their outfield with... Well, I'll show you who Baltimore filled up their outfield with. They have the rights to Paul Blair, plus they have Don Buford, and plus they have Al Bumbry. So that's the three Bs, and there was no room for Robinson. So they really just decided to uh, move on with Frank Robinson, because his last year with Baltimore is 71, 71 is with Baltimore, then he goes to the Dodgers, then he goes to the Angels, and eventually he's managing Cleveland, so we put him on Cleveland. So, uh, we were looking for teams that would be interested in Frank Robinson, and one of the reasons they wanted to move on from him is the Indians have good outfielders coming up from the farm system. They have George Hendrick, they have Oscar Gamble, and they have Charlie Spikes. So they'll fill up this outfield with Lowen's time, which is why... Frank Robinson is expendable. So, the phones started ringing, and the first team to call, St. Louis Cardinals. Let's take a look at who they were keeping. They were keeping Sizemore, second baseman. Uh, they were also keeping Reggie Smith, who they just got from the Red Sox, Reggie Smith. Bill Sedakis, who has a monster split in 73 with home runs. And Chuck Taylor. Of these guys, Cleveland said, we don't need Sizemore. We have Eddie Leone and Fred Stanley and... Uh, I forget the other second baseman, anyway. Uh, Reggie Smith would be nice, but like I said, Cleveland already has enough outfielders. Chuck Taylor's a reliever. Cleveland has one spot open for a starting pitcher. So Sadakis would have to be the guy that Cleveland would get, and he is would be a monster DH. Now, if you're St. Louis, why you want him is that... Right now in your outfield, you have Lou Brock and Jose Ortiz. Ortiz is sort of an extra extra player. You could throw him in the deal. You could make Reggie Smith your center fielder, and Frank Robinson could be in your right fielder. And the Cardinals would have added in the offseason Sonny Siebert, Boston's ace, to join Bob Gibson, Reggie Smith, and they would also have Frank Robinson. And this might be the solution for the Cardinals to catch up to the Reds and Pirates. Well, Cleveland's going to want more than that. So Cleveland said, we want Sonny Siebert now. And the Cardinals are like, Sonny Siebert, we just... Look, he's got a great pitcher. We just got him from the Red Sox in a deal. And Cleveland's like, you want Frank Robinson, give us Sonny Siebert. And then what are you going to... What pitcher are you going to return in the deal? And the Cleveland said, you're not getting uh, Dick Tidrow, because Tidrow is technically as good as Siebert, and he's younger. He's just getting started. We'll send you and Vincente Romo, who actually was a White Sox player. And so the Cardinals go, we'll get back to you. Also, draft tokens would be involved. So they're kind of on the phone, and uh, that would be one of the teams. If you're wondering about going back to play for the Cincinnati Reds, where Frank Robinson once played, it's just not going to work. They got Bobby Tolan, Pete Rose, and um, 
They got young Ken Griffey coming up and George Foster coming up. They got too many young guys coming up in that system. So, no to going back to the Reds. So, the next team to call was Philadelphia because they got the first pick in the draft. We know they're going to take Mike Schmidt. And uh, starting pitcher is really what the Cleveland would covet. Do you have room in the outfield for Frank Robinson? You already have Luzinski. And you have Philadelphia. Their, that team is carrying on Johnny Callison, who's running out of juice as a corner outfielder. Barry Lursch, a starting pitcher. Tim McCarver and Tony Taylor. And do they have a spot in the outfield? Well, they got Luzinski in left. Uh, Lursch is more of a right fielder where Frank Robinson plays. And what pitcher are you going to send him? You're going to send him Pat Dobson? He's a 20-game winner from 1971. Cleveland would be like, ah, Pat Dobson, that's not bad. I think Pat Dobson one day pitches for Cleveland. So Pat Dobson would be the primary player. And you're going to have to send a keeper. One of the things is Frank Robinson is a keeper player, so a keeper has to be involved in the deal. The keepers are Johnny Callison, an outfielder. That's not going to work because we talked about Cleveland has outfielders coming up in their system. Barry Lurch is a starting pitcher. He's just not even as good as Pat Dobson as a replacement there. Tim McCarver, you don't need another catcher. You got Duke Sims and you got Ray Fossey. And Tony Taylor's just another infielder. So Philadelphia was like, well, we'll give you a call back. We'll, go, we'll let you know. Third call came from Portland, who has pretty much nothing. And Portland, let's see who their protectors are. They're protecting Bernie Carbo, who actually doesn't do a lot, believe it or not. Tony Gonzalez, who you just heard, doesn't do a lot. Jim Perry brother of Gaylord Perry, hmm, and Rich Reese. First off, do they have room, Port, this is Portland's team, do they have room in their outfield for Frank Robinson? That's their outfield. They got Rich Coggins, who's sort of like a one-way player. Well, you certainly, you have Carbo, he could be a DH or an outfielder, and Gonzalez is awful. You certainly have room for Frank Robinson on this team. But what player are you going to give him? You got to give them a keeper player and an active player. So the keeper player might even be a guy they cut. But as far as a pitcher goes, they have the rights to Jim Perry, brother of Gaylord Perry. So if Jim Perry was traded for Frank Robinson, then all you got to do is use or use tokens or put position players in the deal. Now Portland, being an expansion team, is like, well, we need all our money. We can't give up tokens. It's got to be a fair deal. Or maybe one token. We're not going to give you two tokens for Frank Robinson. He's getting old anyway. And so Cleveland goes, well, you got to sweeten the deal. And Portland goes, well, you know, we do have Mark Belanger who belongs in the American League, was with the Orioles, and this is his best year in 71. And Cleveland goes, now we're talking. So Cleveland's got to put a player in from 71, the years have to match, and they have this guy, Fred Stanley in 71. Neither of these hitters are much, but Blanger actually hits better, but he's a coveted one at short. Fred Stanley's a three at short, but he is a utility player. And again, this team, Portland, would be getting Frank Robinson. So, these teams are like hot and heavy here. So, uh, this looks like a nice deal. Mark Belanger and Jim Perry reuniting with his brother Gaylord in Cleveland. And the young Portland team gets a star. Frank Robinson becomes Portland, immediately becomes Portland's best player. And Fred Stanley just plays shortstop. And again, why would an expansion team need a one shortstop? Are they going to win the World Series? No, but they would like to put some fans in the seat and start getting more competitive. And that's what helped Frank Robinson. So last, I guessed, Baltimore makes one more futile attempt. 
to get their player back. And do they have a pitcher that the Indians would want? And again, two teams, in, both in the American League, divisions apart. Milt Pappas would be the only guy in the year of 72. And then you're asking for Dick Tidrow at that point. And they're not getting rid of Grant Jackson. He costs too much. And, of course, they're going to have Jim Palmer coming back. Baltimore's keepers again. Baltimore's keepers are Paul Blair. So he could be the outfielder you send to Cleveland, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Palmer has more juice in him than Frank Robinson. Jim Palmer. Boog Powell. And Brooksy. Brooks Robinson. Well, that's sacrilege. You're not going to trade Brooks Robinson. Boog Pal actually does play for Cleveland. You have the rights to Boog Pal. So you could send Boog Pal to Cleveland for Frank Robinson. But does Cleveland have a first baseman? They do. Chris Chambliss. And Chambliss is a better future than Boog Pal, even if he stays in Cleveland before getting traded to the Yankees. So, folks, from all of this, I think it is Portland is going to do this, and Cleveland is going to do it. Cleveland and Portland are going to do this deal. It'll be Jim Perry teaming up with his brother, Gaylord Perry, Mike Kilkenny, and Tidrow is in your rotation, and you already got an entire bullpen. So Cleveland gets rid of Frank Robinson and fixes their pitching staff. As Vincente Romo falls on the floor. Thanks, Vincente. Okay, so Cleveland fixes their pitching staff and only has to mortgage Fred Stanley. And now we're to the point in the deal where now you can see I don't think any token should be involved. If anything, maybe Portland should ask Cleveland for a token. But in reality, Jim Perry, he's near the end of his rope as well. Perry and Robinson are both getting old. And Belanger being a one is nice, but it's not really worth a token. So that's going to be the deal. The rights to Jim, Perry, and Mark Belanger go to Cleveland, and Fred Stanley would go right into the shortstop position for Portland, and the Portland team down here, Carbo, there's nothing... None of these Portland guys is first-round material. Now they do. Now we know who they're going to take in the first round. Frank Robinson. They get a Hall of Famer, Portland, with a first-round pick. And so, yeah, they're not going to win a lot of games, but at least they have a Hall of Fame player for one year. And Cleveland, way up here, they're going to have the brothers, Perry. Gaylord and Jim, plus... They're going to pitch much better because their shortstop is going to be a 1E8, Mark Belanger. That's it tonight for Hot Stove League talk. The Hot Stove League just generated a trade as well. And we're going to put this trade into action. And uh, thank you for joining us, making a live trade. And uh, we'll do more fun stuff like this, considering trades leading up to the draft. We'll see you next time.